Thanks for coming. Dimitri, Prakash, whoever's out there. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari <coughs> Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Jana Vallabha Girivaran Hari Jai Gopi Jana Vallabha Girivaran Hari Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Mr. Bhad Paramahansa Parudika Charja Ashtotur Tata Shri Shri Mata Tavayan Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai Iskan B.B.T. Founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Parudika Charja Ashtotur Tata Shri Shri Mata Tavayan Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai Ananda Koti Vaishnavini Ki Jai Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Srimad Bhagavad Gita Kijai, Sama Veda Bhakta Vrinda Kijai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glory to Sri Guru and Goranga. Tyler, you're still up. Can you open this door, please? I can help. And I, I think I hear the fans going. Make sure they're going. There you go. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Dimitri, down. Vijay is waking up. On this 28th day of September, 2021, in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We are in Chapter 15, The Yoga of the Supreme Person, text number 8, on page 601. Shadiram. Even if you can't read it, you can hear it. We have all other books. We have more books. Here's one right there. Oh, that's yours. Okay. Shadiram. Yadavapnoti. Yat. Chap. Yut Kramati Shwaraha. Grihit Vaitani. Sangyati, Vayur, Gandhan, Abhashayat. 
Shadidam Yadavapnoti Yachap Yut Kramati Shwadaha Guhit Vaitani Sanghati Vayu Gandhana Vashayat Shadidam Yadavapnoti Yachap Yut Kramati Shwadaha Vihit Vaitani Sanghati Vayu Gandhana Vashayat Shadidam Yadavapnoti Yachap Yut Kramati Shwadaha Guhit Vaitani Sanghati Vayu Gandhani Vashayat Damarash No? Okay. Who's next? Go ahead, Kunya Bihari. Shadidam Yadavapnoti Yachap Yud Kramati Shwadaha Guhit Vaitani Sangyati Vayugundhani Bhashayat Go ahead. Shadidam Yadavapnoti Yachap Yud Kramati Shwadaha Guhit Vaitani Sangyati Vayugandhani Bhashayat Shadidam Yadavapnoti Yachap Yud Kramati Shwadaha Guhit Vaitani Sangyati Vayugandhani Bhashayat Anybody online? Shadidam Yad Avapnoti Shadidam Yad Avapnoti Yachapi Utkramatishwaraha Yachapi Samyati Yat chap yut kramati shwaraha. Grihit vaitani sangyati. Grihit vaitani sangyati. Vayogandhani vashayat. Vayogandhani vashayat. Word by words. Shadidam, the body. Yat as. Avapnoti gets. Yat as. Cha api also. Ud kramati gives up. Ishwaraha, the lord of the body. Grihit va taking. Etani, all these, sangyati, goes away. Vayuhu, the air, gandhan, smells. That's uh, a noun. Fragrances. Eva, like, ashayat, from their source. Translation. The living, en the living entity in the material world carries his different conceptions of life from one body to another, as the air carries aromas. Thus he takes one kind of body and again quits it, to take another purport. Here the living entity is described as Ishwara, the controller of his own body. If he likes, he can change his body to a higher grade, and if he likes, he can move to a lower class. Minute independence is there. The change his body undergoes depends upon him. At the time of death, the consciousness he has created will carry him on to the next type of body. If he has made his consciousness like that of a cat or dog, he is sure to change to a cat's or dog's body. And if he has fixed his consciousness on godly qualities, he will change into the form of a demigod. And if he is in Krishna consciousness, he will be transferred to Krishna Loka in the spiritual world and will associate with Krishna. It is a false claim that after the annihilation of this body, everything is finished. The individual soul is transmi transmigrating from one body to another, and his present body and present activities are the background of his next body. One gets a different body according to karma, and he has to quit this body in due course. 
It is stated here that the subtle body, which carries the conception of the next body, develops another body in the next life. This process of transmigrating from one body to another and struggling while in the body is called karshati, or struggle for existence. Om jnana timarandasya jnanandana shalakaya chakshu unmilatam mena tasmai shri gurave namaha. I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and to all members of Sri Parampara, the disciplic succession. So this is a very interesting and graphic description of how the soul passes from one body to another. Notice the context. In the previous verse, Mamai Vangso Jiva Loke Jiva Bhutta Sanatana Manakshastan Indriyani Prakatistani Karshiti. That word Karshiti is brought up at the end of this purport. And Prabhupada defines it as struggling hard, the hard struggle for existence. So we are Krishna's Anksha. You remember what Anksha is? Anksha is a little particle that also has the qualities of the uh, big entity that it's part of. So the uh, little drop of water from the ocean is also salty. The sun ray is also has some heat and light. And we also have godly qualities. At least 50 of the 64. Probably we would always give the percentage, 78%. Um, one of those qualities is independence. Krishna has uh, unlimited independence. You remember this phrase came up a little while ago, Satya Sankalpa? Who remembers what it means? Satya Sankalpa. Yes, exactly. His will is truth. In other words, whatever he decides to do, it's going to happen. That's not true for us, is it? We often try to do something, we fail. So we give it up, try something else, fail. Then we succeed, but not in the way we thought. You know, Because we're minute. We're, we're not really Ishra. We're, we're mentioned as Ishra here because we're, more, we're, to some degree, the lord of this body. But just see how fragile it, fragile is, fra fragile it is, our independence. You breathe the wrong air, and suddenly you're on your back struggling for air. You don't have enough energy to even lift your arm. Where's your independence? We're, we're as described in previous chapters, so graphically, 13th chapter, uh, we're under the control of the modes of nature. That's in the 14th chapter, 13th chapter, uh, this, uh, he described Purushak Prakatisto He Bhunte Prakati Jan Gunan Karanan Guru Sango Sadasajoni Janmasu. He's describing the same thing you know, from a little different point of view. The Purusha, we're called Purusha because we're trying to be enjoyers. By nature, we're Prakriti, explained in the seventh chapter. We're the Pura Prakriti. And the Upper Prakriti is all these earth, water, fire, air, ether. Even the mind, intelligence, ego, those are non-living elements, more and more subtle. So these are apara prakriti, means not, trans, not, not superior. But we're para prakriti, but we're still prakriti. Prakriti is always controlled by the purusha. So we're under control of Krishna, ultimately. And the super soul is within us, the actual purusha. So we are the knower of this field, and to some extent it's controller. Each of us has our little field, body constantly changing. And uh, in complete ignorance, we try to dominate our environment to whatever degree we can, trying to maximize our happiness and minimize our pain. Um, but since our independence is only minute, um, we depend, we de we're dependent on so many things just to have this illusion of, of control. We have to have, has become very evident, enough air of the right, ti right kinds, right? Air, water, food, right? We need, we need association. Uh, children who are abandoned or somehow orphaned and, that's, and, and put away, like warehoused in some big uh, home or something, don't get enough care, they're all stunted. That's, a, that's an essential for proper growth and development of, of uh, you know, character. So uh, we're dependent on so many things but we never lose that essential quality, uh, that spiritual quality of being part and parcel of God. It can be covered. Our, na our spiritual nature, the mind, should certainly be covered. Just think of all the lower animals. Just think uh, every, every day, although I couldn't do it today, but most days I go for a walk. And uh, I point out there's one street 
where there's this old growth, somehow or other, the trees there, the huge trees, and you can see they've trimmed off as over the years. So the, the trees, were, the, the branches were getting too rambunctious, you know. But they're big, solid trees. They've been there for at least 100 years, it looked like, you know. So there's a soul in there. You know, it's practically heartbreaking. Poor soul, almost, conscience is covered almost to nil, and is, you know, is lifting up to the sun, getting, getting the sun, some, getting some water nourishment like that, existing for 100 years. They have the, the, in the fires, they're threatening the sequoias. Those trees are like 5,000 years old, some of them. Prophet sometimes talks about 5,000 years. There's a living entity. Used to be walking, laughing like a human being, but did something hor horrific to get that body. You know, now he may be finally liberated from the body if that fire goes too much. So this is, this is what's going on. This is the, the nature of uh, life in the material world. Is that there's practically infinite souls in different kinds of bodies. And uh, the, lower, the lower forms are, are doing what comes by instinct. Instinct simply means the super soul is telling them to go here, go here. Bark over there, you know. Search over there. It's automatic. They're not incurring any karma. They're burning off karma. You know, but what a horrific uh, the existence that is. Some some you know human being uh, used to be uh, you know living and thinking and breathing and laughing, and then because of out of ignorance performing sinful activity, and then losing the human form, going down. You know, but it's it's a constant roiling ocean of becoming. You remember that phrase Baba Sagara? That came up yesterday, Baba Sagara. The ocean of change, the ocean of birth, old age, disease, and death. So the method, uh, the the um, mechanism by which it happens, shadidam yadavapnoti, uh, the the ishura, the soul who's ma mastered to some degree of this body, cultivates a certain kind of consciousness. Without any uh, higher direction, you're at the mercy of you know whatever culture you're born into, different modes of nature, who you associate with without any, any rhyme or reason or direction, it's, uh, you're bound to be getting more and more entangled in this world. That's what's happening in the present day because the, the Vedic culture is built on this idea of elevation, at least material elevation. So you lead a, a, a pious life, you perform sacrifices, some scars, you know, and may, yeah, maybe you get to heaven, like that. You know. But at the beginning of Bhagavatam, what do we find? Remember the Bhagavatam, do you know? Yes, thank you. Se very second verse, beginning. Dharma projita kaita votra. Here, atra, in this Bhagavatam, we're kicking out, re rejecting all uh, cheating religions, which means materially motivated religions, which includes those, religions means dharma, whatever discipline you may get, that is leading to liberation. Liberation is also a form of, of selfish desire. What is, what is that? Uh, Prahlad Maharaj says, Naivod uh, Vijay? Yeah, no, no. Prayena Deva Munayo Svava Mukti Kama Maunam Charandi Vijane Naparata Nishta. Prayena means for the most part, O oh, oh Lord Deva, O oh Lord Nishingadev. Munio, the, the, the sages, those who are conversant with yoga and, you know, the Vedas. Uh, Svava mukti kama. The word kama is used. They want their own mukti. Svava mukti means my mukti. I want to be liberated, get out of this world. I don't care about anyone else. Go off, and, and, and to that end, he says, maunam charanti. They don't say anything. They take a vow of silence. That's where the word muni comes from, silence. But we're taught that real silence means you, you don't talk nonsense, but you, you, you talk as much as possible about Krishna, right? <laughs> These books, probably, he, he wrote them largely by talking. <laughs> you know? so, so glorifying Krishna is silence in the most profound type of way. So, so these uh, self-centered uh, muktikamis, they, vijane, they go where there's no people, where it's, because it'll break their meditation. They have to withdraw, you know, by force, by force of will, their consciousness from the material energy, the uh, allurements of this world. So you can imagine how difficult it is. Maunam chadanti vijane naparata nishta literally means having no desire to help others. You see. So what does Pallad say? I'm not like that. 
Again, he says, stress, I don't want to be liberated just alone, you know, because I'm moved by compassion by the fate of all of these fools and rascals who are trying to enjoy Maya Sukhaya, which means fleeting pleasure, illusory sense pleasure. That's what keeps us here, this, this prospect of somehow enjoying some fleeting pleasure. So Prahlad says in the previous verse, I'm I'm have no problem. I'm already crossed over the, the, the river of Vaidarani River between the material and the spiritual world. Because wherever I am, I can always glorify you with singing songs about you and merge my consciousness in an ocean of nectar. And he proved it. He was being tortured and, and tormented. They tried to kill him. And what was he doing? He was meditating on on, on Lord Nishingadev on Krishna, and he was completely absorbed, just like Haridas Thakur. They couldn't even get his um, blood pressure up. You know, he wasn't he wasn't afraid. <laughs> and, uh, you can see how miraculous that is. You know how t- how transcendental you have to be to be so equipoised that that nothing can can bother you. It's I always I always marvel at how Haridas Thakur he was he was equipoised in bo- on both poles. One is the allurement of pleasure. You can imagine, you know, he's 25 years old and this beautiful prostitute comes in the middle of the night, you know, the, the moonshine is there and everything. And she's, you know, I want to be with you, you know. He's completely undisturbed. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. He's drinking in every syllable of that holy name, you know. She has nothing for him. It's not that, you know, he only stayed there to, to save her. Because he said, oh, this is a chance to preach, you know. That's you just stay, and I'm, when I finish my rounds, meanwhile, she's hearing the holy name, getting purified. <laughs> Second night, you know, she comes, she says, well, what am I going to do? Wait all night, I'll start, might as well chant myself. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And she starts chanting. <laughs> Third night, she realizes what's going on, and she surrendered, you know, because she's pious, ultimately. So he saved her, then left, gave her his, his uh, little bhajan kutir there. She became purified. I think we have this picture of her shaved up. Although it doesn't say that he told her to shave up, but, <laughs> but still, you know, she renounced everything. So that's one side. And the other side, he has you know, the, the Kazi beat him in 22 marketplaces. They didn't, he didn't say 22 marketplaces, just, uh, just execute him by beating. It turned out that even after 22 marketplaces, they couldn't uh, even uh, injure him. So these big, strong executions were freaking out because if they couldn't execute him, they would be executed. So Haridas understood that. So he says, oh, if that's the case, then I'll die. And he goes into the samadhi where it almost looks like he's dead, you know? They didn't, they didn't know. So they bring him back to the Kazi. He says, what should we do? Should we bury him here? No, 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 don't bury him. It'll become a place of pilgrimage. It'll become, you know. He, so throw him in the river, the Ganges River. <laughs> he throws him in the river. He comes out of samadhi, swims on the other side. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. <laughs> they had promised <laughs> They had promised him. The, the, I think it was the king who said, if you survive this, you can do whatever you want. I said, okay, whatever you want, you know. Because <laughs> just like Aranya Kashipu, he freaked out when Pal- they couldn't hurt Pallad. Because it's one, th- it's one strength to be able to control others and beat them up, you know. But it's even a greater strength to be, be e- equipoised even when someone is attacking you. It, this was, th- there's a story about this having to do with our own uh, actually, this <laughs> I'm not going to tell the, the third time, but the story of Sharaba, many of you were here, you heard that? This was also like that. What, what really this, you know, like, uh, shocked the, his attackers were that he wasn't frightened. He wasn't freaking out when they were pointing the gun at him, even, even when he was, he was lying on the ground. And that was like the supermost miracle. A real faith-building thing, you know. It, the point blank, he shoots the, the, the rifle at him and he misses and he hits a, a rock and it bounces off, you know. Anyway, the, the main thing, Sharaba was just chanting Hare Krishna. And he had that faith in that, that statement of the Shastra. Uh, Mari Krishna Rakeke. Who can kill you if Krishna wants to protect you? And he lived it, you know. It, 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 it's really quite a story. And, that's hap- uh, and, and there's uh, other stories like that. Prabhupada himself, <laughs> the, the Naxalites, were threatening him in, in Calcutta when he did, I think it was the first big pondal there. And they're like these communist terrorists. They're still around, you know. 
fly or die. He sent a message, fly or die, you know. So Prabhupada was, was, wasn't ready to do either, you know. <laughs> so he stayed. They showed up in the tent, you know, threatening. So Prabhupada, he said, oh, give him some seats, you know. He gave him some seats. He started, uh, I don't think he had a tambura, but he was singing the Brahma Samhita. Kind of pacify, you know, they pacify. Then uh, he, he, I forget the, the actual sequence of it, but he invited him to, to a little conference and he said, you know, we're actually uh, establishing spiritual communism. He knew that they liked communism. You know. and, and I know, I remember from my childhood, I was taught some communist dogma. And one of the, one of the mottos uh, that Marx had was, uh, from each according to his abilities to each according to his needs, you know. And and Prabhupada, he you know he had done, he said but that's exactly where we're at. We asked the devotees to give what they can, in, in other words, to to uh, act to serve Krishna according to their abilities, and we provide room and board and things like that, and they're happy because they're serving Krishna, you know. So they were impressed with that, and they they of course they got some nice prasadam and he disarmed them. But and and also he was also threatened in the 1970 Ratha Yatra, where in, in Golden Gate Park, where they, the, he not directly threatened, but the the uh, the, the, the um, hooligans were threatening. They they had claimed the park as their own Golden Gate Park. You know. So there was uh, the, the devotees. Uh, Prabhupada said, "I want to go to the Ratha Yatra." So they they drove in a very circuitous route. So he wasn't there at the beginning. He came in the middle, but at the beginning there was a rumble. We had our own tough guys, you know, and we were able to beat back the danger. So when Prabhupada arrived, all the danger was over. And there's this incredible video. We tried, we tried it. One, one night, actually, we have video night or something. And uh, Prabhupada gets out of the car, and the, the carts are stopped, and he starts dancing. <laughs> he starts dancing, and Hayek Reva's there playing the drum, and the devotees are all around. You know. So the, the, the point is that you can truly be fearless when you're on that transcendental plane and you feel the protection of Krishna and so uh, the, the hard struggle for existence this karshati is going on and as we cultivate our consciousness the, 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 the soul is compared here to the air and the consciousness to the fragrance that you've created and if you if you've been nasty you've been in the mode of ignorance and you're you know you perform no kind of sinful activity then it's like that air is passing over a garbage dump you know and you're bound to get a lower body, probably be a subhuman body. But if you've, if you've uh, been in the mode of goodness, then you'll get a better uh, human body or even a higher body. But if you've cultivated Krishna consciousness, then you, and, uh, and you actually achieve the goal of the constant remembrance of Krishna and devotion to Krishna, then you won't take a, a physical body at all. You'll be transferred to the spiritual world. That's where we're trying to go. And that's where we can really be happy. And the, uh, the angsha, you know, we, we, we have to have a body. The body can also be a spiritual body. And that's our original body. What is real mukti? We're not against mukti, but we want to, we want to know what real mukti is. According to the Bhagavatam, second kano, mukti hitva anyata rupam swarupena vivastati. Mukti doesn't mean losing your individuality and merging into the Brahman. This is the Mayavadi's idea. Real Mukti means to give up all the fal false forms that we've had that aren't really us. Anya, they're called Anyata Rupam. Even in this one body, we've been through so many forms. Childhood, as Krishna describes, the adolescence. Some of us are still in adolescence. And, uh, I'm just <laughs> and you know, old age, I'm, I'm the oldest one. You know, he's got a lot of white hair over there. So, okay, we're just passing through, passing through. So we've all had these different bodies. I have a picture. I should come bring a picture. I have one picture left from all the pictures that my father did. He saw it. <laughs> Five-year-old, you know. So with that, you know, that, that was me, you know, 70, uh, what, like 68 years ago, you know. <laughs> so I'm still the same person, but the body's changed. But that's, this is just one. Then we've had previous bodies before and so many different bodies. So these are anyata rupam. These are not our, this is not our swarup. Your swarup is the, is the form that doesn't change. This is our original spiritual form. The philosophy is that it's covered, it's not lost. We have our original form, we forgot it, we've taken on all these other forms because we've rebelled against Krishna, we turned back. 
which uh, bayim, the first word in that verse is fear. As soon as you lose contact or forget, you know, you, you forget Krishna, then you don't feel the protection, you know, and it's you against the world, and it's just fear. You can come out of the womb and right away it's fearful. What's this? You know, you start screaming, and oh, here's safety, the mother's breast. Oh, now I'm happy. Yeah. It's described in the, in Kapila Dev's teachings. It's amazing, uh, you know, uh, life in the womb. He's describing how the, the fortunate soul, uh, he regrets his position. What did I do? After, after seven months or so, you wake up. You're conscious, but you can't do anything. You're in the womb. So you start praying. You're praying to the Lord. Oh, I'm so sorry. I should have come to Mangalartik. I, you know, this time I'll do it. This time I'll do it. <laughs> no question. You got two, two months of that, you know. So then you finally come out. But... <laughs> If, if you're not so fortunate, you may be just pious but not a devotee, then uh, when you come out, you're not in a devotee family, so you're getting trained up in mundane stuff. You don't, you don't have any say in the matter. If you're really a, a, a serious devotee, you'll take your, your birth in a devotee family, which is so valuable. Because what you learn, every, they've done studies, what you learn in those first few years stays with you your whole life. You know, it, it's, it's, it's so important. So, uh, here he's describing that the process, Vaya Gandana Vashet, it's just like this, the, the, we've created a certain consciousness and uh, it, 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 it's, it's either very good, good, medium, bad, you know, according to our, our, uh, how we associate with the modes of nature. And that will determine our fate, what our next body is going to be. So knowing this, the intelligent person will ask the question, well, how can I act so I can get the very best body or even the spiritual body in the next life. How do I work toward that? And that's what is described as, this morning we had the class, Padabhavastava da Bodhijato. I, I don't know if you remember the Sanskrit, but I, I, I learned, there's a lesson, there's a nice little lesson here, three verses. The verse I had, Nunam Pamatta Kuru Karma, uh, 553, I think it is, or 4, 554. Five, Today was 555. Five. And uh, Rishabh Dev is explaining exactly what's going on here. He says, Nunam pamatta kurote vikarma yadindriya priteya apanoti. He says, it is certainly true, he's speaking to his hundred sons and many other sages who've gathered, that those who are not just mad, very mad, pramatta means totally out of their mind, if you just uh, dedicate your life to sense gratification. Now that can be of all different varieties. It can be like a you know, wholesome, that, uh, yes, I just want to have a, you know, a good family and this and that. But it's all based on the body and the senses, you know, and the subtle sense of the mind. There's nothing spiritual about it. So if you just dedicate yourself to that, then he says it's not, nasaru manye, means I don't think it's a very good idea. Because by that activity, you're going to get another body which will produce a great deal of suffering. So that's the last thing you want. You're trying to enjoy as much as possible, but you're ensuring great suffering for yourself because it's totally out of any context of spiritual cultivation. So therefore, the next verse, which I think is like the heart of the three, the one we had this morning. Now, there's two uh, uh, instances of a pairing here in this verse. What I mean is the word yavat tavat. Yavat tavat. Yavat means uh, 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 as long as you do this, and tavat means then you're going to get this. We, use, uh, that's, we act like that all, all the time, uh, you know? In other words, this is, a, is part of what it means to be in, in the material world. When you understand the implications of your activities, cause and effect, it says, as long as you don't study, Daniel, <laughs> you're not going to pass the test. That long, you'll, you're going to be left back in you know, the, third, the junior year of your high school, whatever. <laughs> as long as this happens, this will happen. So we have two instances now. <laughs> So he says, Parabhavas Tavad. So you can put Tavad first. Tavad means that long. You'll be defeated. Parabhavas defeated. Defeated means you won't, go, you won't uh, get liberation. You won't go back to Godhead. You'll be come back again to suffer birth. So that's defeat. Everyone's being defeated here. Parabhavas Tavad, Aboda Jato. Now what is causing that defeat? Ignorance. Aboda. Remember, we, we had so much about knowledge. The Vijay was given wonderful discourse this morning. So it's born of ignorance, this defeat. If you don't know how to act for your, to, to be victorious over the material energy and go back to Godhead, then you must be defeated. 
Parat David Abodajato, born out of ignorance, Parabavas Tavad Abodajato, Yavan Nadigyasata Atma Tatvam. As long as you don't inquire into the truth of the self, this kind of knowledge we're learning right here what is the self, what is the body, what is the supreme self, all of these things. Uh, then you'll be ignorant and you'll be defeated again. You'll be born again and again and again. Now, how does it work? He describes it. Uh, yavat kriyas tavadi damano. There's a second set. Yavat kriyas. Kriyas here means food of activity. Tyler, what is, what is this food of activity? Can you describe in simple words what that means? Yeah. You're trying to taste that fruit. In other words, you're the center. This is called the false ego. I'm the center of enjoyment and, and control, and I want to you know, do for myself. This is false ego. So that's kriyas. Ya, as long as you act that way, tavadi idam manovai karmatmakam, then your mind will be filled with ideas of this fruit of action. So many plans how I'm going to make all this money and enjoy, you know, I'm going to go over there and, you know, that, that bar tonight, whatever. And so this is all karmatmakam. And mind is, uh, the, the conditioned soul is, mind is filled with that, you know. That all has to be cleaned out. It has to be reformed. So instead of karmatmakam, it's krishnatmakam, for Krishna's sake, rather than for your own sake. That's, that's the ideal. So karma, karmatmakam yena shirita By that mind, saturated with these food of ideas, selfish ideas, uh, that produces another body. Yena shirita bandha. Bandha is bondage. Prabhupada even pointed out in a lecture how it's the same word practically. You're going to stay bound up to a physical body. We're trying to get free from the bondage of this body. But you're doing activities that ensure that body. So therefore, then the third verse, he gives the uh, solution. Uh, first he summarized, evam manak karma vasham payunte. Now karma vasham means impelled. We're impelled. If your mind is filled with those ideas, you don't have anything other, any inkling of this philosophy, then you'll be impelled to act kar uh, karmically, fruitably. It may be in different modes. Oh, I used to be in the mode of ignorance. You might not even think of it that way. The Western psychology is trying to get you from the mode of ignorance up to the mode of passion. Then they think, oh, this is a success. This person used to be distressed and, 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 and depressed and didn't want to do anything, didn't want to, you know, couldn't, didn't want to even work to enjoy. So I gotta, I'll give him this pill and we'll talk about it and we'll get him fired up. And then if the person gets a, gets a job and starts working, oh, this is successful, you know. But he's just bringing him out from the mode of ignorance to the mode of passion. But then you can easily stink back down into the mode of ignorance, <laughs> as we learn. That's not real success. That's fake. So this is the real reformatory for the, for the mind, the consciousness, that th completely reform that karmatmaka, that, that selfish uh, food of desire, that uh, false ego, so that we act on the basis of real ego, which is that we're servants of God. That's our real nature. That's our sarup. That's how you're talking about mukti. Giving up the f the, the, all these false forms based on the false ego and, and get a, a form that's uh, 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 suitable for us to act on our real ego as servants of Krishna in, in, in a variety of ways. And that will bring us real happiness. It will certainly bring us liberation from birth and death. And will be reinstated in our swarup. That's the idea. So the, so the, la so the last part of the, the second line of this last verse in this series that we're going to study tomorrow in class is, Pritir nayavan mai vasudeve namuchate dehi yoga natavat. Here again you have yavatavat. Uh, as long as, he says, as long as one doesn't have love, this is Rishabdev, who's an incarnation of Krishna, right? So he, Pritirne, as long as one doesn't have love for me, Rishabdev speaking, uh, who am Vasudev, he's revealing it there, that's Krishna, uh, then you will, not, you will not be able to get free from the bondage of the body. He, he expressed it that way. If you do have love for Krishna, then that liberation comes automatically. You forget about liberation. Liberation is, is, is insignificant because if you're really absorbed in devotional service, you're detached from all of the attractions that have kept you bound all this time. You're becoming more and more attracted to Krishna and that automatically brings liberation. So liberation is not the ultimate goal, but it's an important preliminary goal. And that's why Krishna says, Janma Mitya Jada Vyadi Dukkha Doshana Darshanam, that one should always see uh, you know, to understand, especially in the beginning stages, the evils of birth, old age, disease, and death. And how the fact of those things 
makes uh, any struggle for trying to become happy and peaceful in this world, which is temporary, completely absurd. It's a fool's errand. It's, it's a dream that will never be, be, be uh, realized. Our real uh, success is working in such a way that we progressively become at attached to Krishna and, and serving Him and following in the mood of Lord Chaitanya and all of the Acharyas, trying to take as many people with us as possible. That's really pleasing to Krishna. And, and the more we can please Krishna, the more we become pleased. So in the, in the act of, of trying to save ourselves and others by becoming Krishna conscious, giving Krishna consciousness, you're, you're automatically becoming liberated, becoming free from the, the, the addictions of this world that bind us, and you're becoming totally addicted to Krishna. We want to become addicts. Prabhupada said that. He, this is interesting. This famous uh, uh, conversation he had with um, John Lennon and Yoko Ono. If you've read that book, Chad, be happy. It's in there. Right? So they were, you know, world famous people. You know, this is the Beatles talking. One of the Beatles. So Prabhupada is staying there at the estate the way it worked out. They, you know. And so on the wall is a picture of them in kind of an obvious, obviously uh, uh, addicted uh, state. You know, they were into some drugs. I don't want to say which one, but heavy drugs. So they asked a the question. How can one recognize who's a real genuine guru? And you know Prabhupada's answer. <laughs> What's the answer? Yes, you find that person who's most addicted to Krishna, and you, that's, your, that's your guru. <laughs> so it didn't really work for them, but it's, it's, it's recorded and it's, it's really good. So we've got to become addicted. We're going to become addicted to something. So why not make it a very wholesome addiction with no bad effects? Because if we're addicted to anything material here, is everything okay? Okay, do you want to see? Take a seat. You can, okay. Okay, anyway, thanks for coming by. Hare Krishna. So how do we, how do we get that addiction? By mainlining. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Chanting with great attention and, and regularly and becoming regulated and everything related to Krishna and especially the hearing and chanting because you can always have that with you. You know, it's not like, you know, <laughs> anyway, I don't want to take the analogy too far. <laughs> but it, but uh, how can I score? You know, we, I, I got to score some drugs. <laughs> You don't have them, you know. But th that's the thing. You always have the Krishna drug with you at all times. You just have to decide to take it. And, and uh, the wonderful thing about it is it becomes more and more addictive the more you take it. And that's more and more wholesome for the soul and also for the body. You know, you're not, you're, I mean, the four regular principles and all of these things leading a wholesome life. It's, it's all good in every direction, actually. And so that's what we want to try to cultivate. And then we'll be uh, assured of taking our best body in the next life. Okay, and the next one, <laughs> I didn't plan this. The next word, the next verse has a, wor a word in it that actually means, one of the meanings is in addiction. And we're going to study that verse now. It just has a small purport. Okay, uh, we'll study it quickly, then we'll ask for questions. Leave at least five minutes. Text 9. Shotram chakshus parshanamcha rasanam granam evacha adishtayam anaschayam vishayan upasevate The living entity, thus taking another gross body, obtains a certain type of ear, eye, tongue, nose, and tense of touch, which are grouped about the mind. He thus enjoys a particular set of sense objects. Purport. In other words, if the living entity adulterates his, his consciousness with the qualities of cats and dogs, in his next life he gets a cat or dog body and enjoys. Consciousness is originally pure like water. But if we mix water with a certain color, it changes. Similarly, consciousness is pure, for the spirit soul is pure. But consciousness is changed according to the association of the material qualities. Real consciousness is Krishna consciousness. When, when, therefore, one is situated in Krishna consciousness, 
he is in his pure life. But if his consciousness is adulterated by some type of material mentality, in the next life he gets a corresponding body. He does not necessarily get a human body again. He can get the body of a cat, dog, hog, demigod, or one of the many other forms, for there are 8,400,000 species. So obviously, Bob is talking here about those who have a body that has a, 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 a Krishna speaking about those who have the body with these five senses that we have. You know, there are other, like the trees. You know, they don't have eyes. But the idea is is that you get a body just suitable for the consciousness that you've cultivated, and then adishtayam uh, anishtayam, and you're within the mind. There's a mind. Maybe the cats and dogs, they have minds, you know, rudimentary consciousness. And they're controlling their senses. The, the, the mind is always looking, you know, perceiving through the senses for something uh, attractive. And if it perceives something dangerous, and there's a reaction there. The mind is doing it. Intelligence is figuring how to do it and directing the mind and the senses. So it's, it's true even in the rudimentary, you know, uh, species like cats and dogs. But the word I, word I, uh, combination of words I wanted to focus on was the last two. Vishyanupasevate. Now I, you know, I work with words all the time, and I have a Sanskrit dictionaries and everything. So I looked up this word upasevate, and one of the words, that, one of the me- meanings is uh, addiction, to become addicted to. You become addicted to a certain set of sense objects. Probably would always give the example of the hog, you know, who loves to eat stool, and you know, that's uh, how could how could anyone like that, you know? But that's just a different body. If you act like, you know, abominably, you can get that body and be in that situation. And then you think you, forgive me. I used this, this, this phrase a long time ago and it was funny. And uh, you're in hog heaven, you know. <laughs> they think they're happy. <laughs> but uh, a human being would never think that's happy. So the demigods look at us and say, how could these human beings live like that, you know. And uh, it says, so, and, but, but, but Krishna is looking at the demigods and, and he's uh, compassionate to them because they're also bound up. It may be a higher form of sense gratification, but it's still bondage to a physical body and eventually you lose it and you can be degraded down to the, you know, the hogs and dogs and cats. So the, the, the idea is vishyanupasevate. Vishya uh, is commonly means the sen- uh, object of the senses that you can enjoy. And I always point out that the word poison is visha. So you can see how the Sanskrit language itself is teaching us some truths here. That, that just uh, trying to enjoy the senses, it's like poison that's, that's uh, dulling your consciousness and keeping you bound here. That was what uh, Rishabdev was saying in his verses. So that's why there has to be some austerity. Again, to Rishabdev, what, what is he saying? Don't act like the cats and dogs. Like I put it into a little uh, poem. Uh, uh, don't waste this precious human life, dear friend, by working hard for hoggish happiness. Through bhakti yoga, worldly life transcend and learn to taste divine, lens, divine love's endless bliss. So this is the, the choice we have as human beings. But it takes, now that I said bhakti yoga, but in the verse he says tapo divya, it means uh, divine uh, austerity. There has to be some austerity because we're in an addicted state. If we just go with the flow, then we're going to try to enjoy the senses one after another. Just like little children, you know, one-year-olds. They can't control the mother. Don't, don't eat that. Don't eat that. Right? How many times? <laughs> Even Krishna, he was accused of eating earth. Right? <laughs> so that's a, a parent's uh, duty, is to, to teach the child what, can, what is wholesome, what's not. Krishna is the Supreme Father. He's teaching us what is wholesome and what is not. So any kind of cultivation of addiction or attraction for the things of this world is unwholesome for the soul. So therefore, under higher guidance, Krishna, Bhagavad Gita, the Guru, then we have to accept that we have to, to say no when the senses are telling us to do something we know is bad for us. And, we, you know. and, and the wonderful thing about Krishna Khanda is if you practice it correctly and strictly, especially if you have good association that is helping you, then it's, it doesn't take long to be able to see and to be able to give up those things without t- too, too much difficulty, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like meat eating. I mean, I don't, uh, you know, it doesn't take long to just say, my God, how did I ever, you know, that. 
But but I remember, you know, growing up, I was totally atheistic family. If it, if there was no meat in the meal, I didn't think there was even a meal, even breakfast. You know, people live like that. And you know, it's what what we've been saved from, just by chanting Hare Krishna. Can you imagine all of the the, the cows that we were responsible for killing just out of ignorance? I like to I like to recount how I, I remember how uh, I remember when McDonald's started. You know, they, in the early 60s or late 50s. Oh, now we can have cheeseburger and fries before we go bowling, you know. <laughs> Didn't think twice about it. But it's all going in the record. Without coming to Krishna consciousness, oh boy. You know, you can imagine. So, the, the, uh, we, we're, we're going to get another uh, ear and eye and so forth. If we're fortunate, it'll be a spiritual eye, spiritual ears. And we'll be completely addicted to Krishna. Who are the greatest devotees? The gopis. They even complain. We can't stop talking about him. There's a verse where it says, um, okay, wait a minute. I have to show some more to self testament. Are there any questions, either local or remote, that we can... Yes. Okay, Dr. Bob, you're first. Thank you, Prabhu. Nice class. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. All glory to um, Okay, real quick. So you said right at the beginning of class, something I was just pondering, that uh, when we take an animal, if we take an animal form... Is this working? Check. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If we take an animal form, we're not generating karma, but we're relieving karma. We're working it off. Yes. So like when there's an oil spill and the little ducks get covered with oil, that could be karma from a past human life? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whatever, you know. In other words, you're, the limited amount of time you're in an animal's body, you're uh, burning off whatever karma nice. was, and you move up, you know, a slot. There's a whole se sequence, so you come to a human life again. Nice. Everyone get, uh, comes back. There's no eternal damnation, you know. How can there be a, a God who's Suridam, who's the best friend of all the living entities, and say, oh, sorry, you have to stay in, <laughs> in hell forever. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of father is that? Um, one more quick question. Uh, do you, you mentioned something about the trees. Um, do you recall anywhere in Shastra where it says that the trees, they can see, but they can't hear? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have that kind of sophistication. Well, what's the verb form of uh, Krishna? Uh, we, we were discussing in the class in the morning, I guess. I'm sorry? The verb, verb of Krishna. The verb. Yes. The, yeah, the act. Yeah, it's, it's karshati. Karshati is the verb. He's, he's pulling. He's attracting. So I but mean, that word came here again. Yes, it came here again. It came in Mamai Vangsa Jiva Loke. That the check seven is at the end of the verse. Hmm. Prakriti stani karshati. Okay. So, uh, but but here it means pulling. You know, in, in order to to exist, the the struggle for existence oh. is in a sense because it's like a, the plow. You know, the the kushi go raksha, kushi go raksha. That's what the, the 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 farmers do. Kushi means plowing, and go raksha means, of course, protecting the cows. So that you know, that's pulling. You know, like it's the same verse. But that syllable kush, I talked about that. Is his name? That's uh, like com uh, uh, encompassing all the attractive features of of God of Krishna. That's why we say Krishna. The name is non different from Krishna, because it's got all that attractiveness, and the na is the bliss. Is the is the ecstasy you experience? So if we really come to the point of purity and we chant the name Krishna, the very name can put us into ecstasy, because it's, we're with Krishna. That's why the great devotees they don't want to stop chanting, you know, ever. Daniel has a question. He's not taking notes anymore, but he must have it memorized. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you, Jirifu. Um You were talking about how the consciousness, how the consciousness is like water. And how over time we kind of, you know, mixed it with other stuff. Um, I know chanting and doing devotional service is like one way of like purifying the mind and, you know, turning it back into pure water. Chaitanya and Marjanam, yeah. Is there such thing as like the water being contaminated with like a, like let's say there's something at the bottom of like the barrel, you know, and it's like there's something really rotten down there and you can't really scoop it out? Is there like. Yeah, there's always limits to every analogy, okay? <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the, the usual thing is that a consciousness is originally pure, like pure water that comes down. Of course, nowadays the air is so polluted. But, uh, and then when it hits the ground, it can become mixed with mud and, and uh, impure. So you can say that Krishna is kind of like a distilling process. 
or sublimating. The word sublimate also is used when bo think you boil water, isn't it? Yeah. So, so, and I love that word sublimate because it means to make sublime. So that which is kind of contaminated, modes of nature, unclear, uh, becomes pure and sublime by the process of devotion, so purification. And that's what Rishabh said. He says in that verse, by the process of austerity, which is like heating, that's also a lot of part of purification, of water, distilling water. Uh, that tapas means to heat. Shudye jasma, you, you, sut, sut from shudye, your existence becomes purified, and by the purified existence, you become more and more able to enjoy brahma saukya, which means spiritual happiness, which is endless in two ways. It doesn't terminate in time, and it's ever increasing. Go ahead, Yaron. Is it, uh, I just want to make sure I understand this correctly. Is it always uh, that you go to suffer the burn of the, the karma into the hellish planets? Or sometimes it, you don't really acquire that, you know, a lot of bad karma, so you kind of just fall down to lower species? How does it work? I just want to see. Um, you know, I don't want to say something that I'll, I'll later have to correct. Because it's, it's, it's described like at in the end of the fifth canto, which we're reading now, the most hair-raising chapter, the description of the hells, that in, in the purpose there, probably explains you're, you're kind of being trained up by all of this punishment. So you're, you're covering your consciousness yeah. more and more so that you'll be, then you'll be suitable to take your place in, the, uh, in some animal species. Mm -hmm. So it is kind of uh, the, the normal necessary. process. It's yeah. necessary. Yeah. They, okay. and, and, the, and the most amazing thing, it, it sounds like there for millions of years, but it may, it may actually be only a few seconds, but it seems like that long mm. because it's, it's so much suffering. So we don't want to go there. We want to go to the place where every moment, it, it's, it's we're there for infinity of time, but every moment is passing so quickly because it's so enjoyable. <laughs> Seeing Krishna, being with Krishna, or anticipating being with Krishna. Hare All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Haribo.